Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to the philosophy of art and science. As always, if you support these efforts, head over to patreon.com slash tawahado. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash T-W-A-H-I-D-O. You can also join the YouTube channel directly if you are watching this on YouTube. I know some people go for the audio format, and we're trying to get everywhere soon. Very much behind on uploading episodes, but we'll get there soon as I'm on a summer vacation. But you can join the YouTube channel at a dollar a month if you want, or even $5 a month. Some people at $25 a month. My special guest today is Niftalim Daggu. And he is an artist who caught my attention, uh, I think on the gram or Twitter, one of the two, with his new homemade sunset. No, me balo. And they know how's it called? Yeah, yeah. his his comic, Natala uh, Man. So welcome to the program, Niftalim. Yo, what's good? <laughs> what's good <laughs> shout out, shout out to the flag in the background. <laughs> of course, of course, represent, <laughs> represent. You got to represent. Does the flag make an appearance in this comic? Um, um, kind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to spoil a lot of things, and you never okay. know. If, you never know which era the comic book is. You know, you never know. So. Like, respect yes that's that's fair to say so why don't we uh rewind a bit there, there seems to be a proliferation um you're one of a few artists i've seen getting more into using um modern tools to use i think the digital as as well as as hand tools when when you're doing this process do you create it all online do you start off offline first how, how do you go about just the process of of doing the art that you do no actually um i am not i'm not like an illustrator artist mm -hmm. i'm a graphics designer uh certified mm -hmm. by california arts um i think it's around your yeah around where my neck live. of the woods yeah yeah <laughs> and like in graphics design you don't have to be um, an excellent illustrator to create good art you just have to collect uh, segments you need and uh, use uh, basic tools like Adobe and uh, Canvas or anything or your phone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So the main thing is just to be inspired and do what nobody's doing. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's a good point. Doing what nobody's doing, and it's interesting the way you put it. So now I'm I'm curious because some people say there's nothing new under the sun, right? And so I'm I'm wondering, uh, obviously you're you're making something that makes it original. You're doing something that is your own your own spice that makes it unique, but you're building off of maybe ideas or themes that kind of already existed. When you first started off in the graphic design, are you just more of a, a curator? Like are you more just putting things together? Like at what point do you feel comfortable in your learning to begin making uh, creations more and more on your own as opposed to you know mishmatching and, and hodgepodging different uh, different pieces you see elsewhere well first of all like as a creative you're a creative too so you know there's this guilt where, that we all feel because we don't create the, the thing from nothing like you know what i mean we just stole the, the concept from somewhere then we uh, give it our own spice, then voila, like Steve Jobs even say, like, you have to steal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> iPhone, <laughs> iPhone, iPhone because even iPhones, they were a stolen concept, like he stole from some other dude. Uh, maybe we will verify that fact later. But <laughs> so, uh, like, of course, uh, I, I'm, I don't believe that um, we're as human beings here, like an interesting concept there over there, you say, like, nothing new under the sun of course there's nothing new uh ecclesiastes yeah 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 like, I, yeah I love the bible so like <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah like um we just recycle things you know we recycle them we uh uh when i say we i'm, I'm talking to you too like uh, mm -hmm. any creator you're a creative this is this podcast is creating you know you're uh making your own way of art. It doesn't have to yeah, be. I'm trying to be the Ethiopian Joe Rogan. Of course you, I love that dude, by the way, like <laughs> <laughs> you will be, I mean, maybe better, but <laughs> so like, uh, there's nothing new 
that I've created. I'm just recycling from Marvel, from Stanley, and our I'm using our own beautiful cultures like the Natala, the, the Telets, and our own stories that we face and our own values and morals. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, this is going to be a very basic point to most of the Ethiopians in the audience, but you'd be surprised <laughs> how many people are of different background who tune into this channel as well, not just Ethiopians. And okay. that's because I've tried to have varied guests, you know, obviously I highlight Ethiopian artists like yourself as, as much as possible, because I'm proud to do so, but, you know, talk to Fad and George too. And okay. so <laughs> let's pretend someone has no idea what a, a net Allah is. How do you begin to describe, you know, the the cultural significance of the Natala? And just on a basic note, like, what is it? Okay, uh, I'm not a, a big, uh, what do you call, anthropologist or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, just to how, you know, to keep it, like, simple, you know, where, where, where did you see it? You know what I mean? You must have seen it somewhere, like we said, connecting it to then add it into the creative puzzle pieces that you're putting it together. Where did you encounter? Like what's the setting or the context in which you, like a basic thing we could just say, it's like a white cloth. Like that's a very kind of basic thing. Like you said, specialists, maybe beyond anthropologists, tailors, you know, like <laughs> they could tell you a lot more about it, but uh, what, or Shamani, like wh what would you say is, um, I mean, certainly not your earliest memory because it's probably when you were a little kid, but what sort of memories or what sort of context or settings do you see the Natala in? Well, uh, like my grand my granddad, he uh, used to make uh, the Shamani things. And okay, that's cool. Like there's a, a lot of history with uh, that. And in the current era, I mean, in the contemporary time, like Natala is everywhere when you're happy, when you're sad, you know, when you're marrying, when you're having a child or like the net allow, it reminds you of your mom uh, and like this uh, and the, the beauty. And when, when as Christians and if there are Christians or um, Semitic people and the and the group chat and the <laughs> group chat and the it's podcast. a worldwide group chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the podcast, like I think it's my personal opinion. Do I, um, I think this not a lot like the designs is related to the Hebrews, and I don't know like it, it kind of it's kind of international too, and mm -hmm. the, the design is also similar with other African uh, designs too. If you like some, if like mostly East and sometimes in the West, I'm not sure about that, but we see it on uh, places, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and I see. Um the the kind of unique aspect of it that that you use is it becomes that Allah man is like it's his cape and it's interesting because we have uh, a lot of capes in our culture too the whole the whole kaaba thing whenever we see these images of of the 20th century especially before the revolutionary period in ethiopia but but even today sometimes you know um there are some people at my local church and stuff that have capes and so it's uh there's something glorious about it. Like you see Star Wars, they got capes in there. And, uh, you know, Lando Calrissian is like the main black character in Star Wars. He's He's got these capes too. So we know that there's something, uh, there's something regal. It's something that reminds us of kings. And I don't know, it seems to be some connection between superheroes and, and uh, and royalty w without, without revealing too much because we will kind of encourage people to, look out for the project whenever it is released is there anything you can tell us either about the superpowers that will slowly be revealed or what what type of uh villainous villains or antagonists would be in in the uh, comic yeah sure well uh there's some a little drama that happened while creating this uh <laughs> comic uh the, the the face that i used was like this net alaman concept was uh made by Abyssinia Fine. I'm not sure if you know them. No, tell they, me about them. They, uh, and uh, the leader, I'm not sure if the, the, the one of the their crew made, like Bibi Tommy, he uh, created this concept. Like he made it, he made, he made the Natala Man series. Like he had five episodes on his YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And, but it's a parody. It's not something serious like the posture. So I was like, okay, why, why not I make it like something very, um, 
uh, serious, like something very everyone can engage in, you know. Uh, but he was not happy about it. He DM'd me and he was like, no, I have my own book. I'm going to release my own book. So mm. uh, this is kind of clashing with me and you should stop, take it down kind of situation. You know what I mean? So I, I, I respect him. So I'm not going to do it. But there's a good news. But there's good news. Uh, the good news is uh, this concept is coming out um, as a woman. Okay, as a woman, and uh, it's not gonna be um, uh, it's not gonna be too supernatural ish like mm -hmm. ours. It's gonna be more techy. It's gonna be more uh, related with to uh, espionage and high tech in ET. You know what I mean? Like undercover yeah. high school high school or college student girl, and it's gonna it's gonna be in a female's perspective. You know, like and empowering woman I, I, for a feminist <laughs> side of me is, you know, like I believe like if we empower women, we can uh, change. I mean, it's or I don't know, we can lift up some uh, way from our community. You know what I mean? Like so. Yeah, I've heard about in the past these, the way they try to target different places in Africa for for good. Mm -hmm. Is by providing these micro loans, these small business loans, but like on a really granular level to the local women and they found that giving kind of direct cash in this way to the businesses that they're trying to do it it has made a, a huge effect because a lot of times people just try to give them things without asking them what it is that they want but the cash kind of facilitates what it is that they want and i i think technology would have a similar effect so if they're very tech savvy you know i i saw before the pandemic Jack had went to Ethiopia and he was saying he wanted to spend 2020 mm -hmm. in Africa and he didn't specify the country. I was hoping he was going to go to Ethiopia and I, I, I seen him with several real strong figures in the tech community in Ethiopia who are women as well. So I, I don't think it's just uh, made up to, you know, I know uh, there's been a lot, there've been a lot of conversations, at least in the United States about different people worrying about changes they've seen in comics and wanting to make sure that the story itself is not affected just to hit quotas. But the way that I've heard you describe it, it sounds like a, a natural way to do it. So what, who would be the enemy in uh, a tech savvy world? I'm thinking of, Cory Doctorow has a series of fictional novels. I've read. I've read one. Um, I haven't seen the television show, but some good friends have told me about iRobot. I don't know if uh, if that's related as 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 well. But uh, do do you have any influences? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that you would think would uh, make good nemeses or or villains for someone who's into tech. Uh, well, like. The genre is going to be more of uh, like crime related, investigation mm -hmm. related uh, genre. Of course, there are going to be some gigs and laughs, obviously, like their romance and a bit like, like I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be interesting. Uh, but the, the enemy is going to be like, uh, uh, it's going to feel like the plot where like there are a, a different groups of villains, but they work for one person kind of uh, mm -hmm. plots, you know? But it's yeah. not, you're not going to predict it like the plot the basic plot is this or maybe not like <laughs> you know <laughs> like so the, the it's, it's gonna be like that that's what i'm thinking and uh yeah like um i'm not yeah, sure if you, you yeah go ahead i'm not sure if you uh watch um cartoons or animes like mm -hmm. big time since really? since way back yeah really? since way back I picked up my first Shonen Jump magazine, which included Shaman King, Naruto, Bleach, and others oh. uh, in 2003. But yeah, man, and, but in the 90s, I was watching. That's when I read uh, manga for the first time. But okay. in terms of dub anime, I mean, I, I grew up in the early 90s with Dragon Ball Z on my TV. So some people consider that cheating because everyone watched a Dragon Ball Z, at least where I lived. But uh in terms of like reading manga from 2003 onward yeah 
like interesting fact like about this uh upcoming concept or comic book well, one of the main reasons is like uh, if you notice like the animations are they came up they come after like the what do you call like the graphic novels mm -hmm. first the graphic novels then yes. animators they get inspired then they make the uh, what do you call the anime and and often you can tell when yeah. the quality of the anime goes down, they call them the filler episodes, is when they stray from the graphic novel. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, they, they just, like Naruto, for example. Oh, <laughs> my Naruto. God. It's a, <laughs> I, I literally have to go to Reddit. I'm rewatching Shippuden right now, the second Naruto series, and I'm having to go to Reddit, like, every few days to say, like, while I'm binge-watching, which episode should I skip? Because <laughs> it's really not worth it, you know? Sometimes they got, like, a Elvis... A Japanese person impersonating Elvis Presley, and it has like nothing to do with the ninja violence that I'm tuning in for. Of course, right, right. Like, yeah, I, I feel what you mean. Like, um, so going back to the this part again, like the animation, like uh, the the first design that you saw from the Netherland dude, like the man. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're gonna amplify the art style and. Have you seen, like, have you, are you familiar with, like, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Etan Comics? Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar. Uh, Etan Comics, his team is developing a new art style, like, uh, for example, like, animes, they have their own common art, uh, the way of drawing eyes and uh, structures and every, they have their own art style. Like, yeah. And they're, and they're using, like, the old Ethiopian Orthodox uh, church, uh, the eye, drawing styles, like, from the mm -hmm. eye. The, so, the huge eyes of the iconography. Yes, I'm. We're going to maybe use that or ha create our own to, um, style, but it's going to be better than the the first one you saw, like the first cover mm -hmm. you saw. It's going to be more of uh, a high definition um, graphics, like uh, Invisible Man, like the one you're watching currently watching right now. You're more like yeah. So just I'm just let me just drop that thought over there. <laughs> that's good. No, that that's good. And um, have you thought at all about skin tone? For example, I think it's hilarious that The Simpsons, you know, one of the most successful animations of all time, they had this like weird yellow skin, and then you know the characters they kind of look black if you look at the hair, but they kind of like look like they could be white. You're not really sure what they are. Um, and you have some Ethiopian artwork. I, I think my sister has some, or, or I've had some as well, where you see the large eyes, but then you see the skin tone is kind of like blue or, or purple even sometimes, a bluish purple. But then sometimes they're more realistic for the various shades of brown. Uh, have you ever any given thoughts to um, you know, some of the most incredible Ethiopian content I've seen recently in terms of film? has been related to magic realism and surrealism by the Spanish director, especially the movie Crumbs. I don't know if you had a chance to see that one, but are you, are you, you're going for a more realistic feel or a more surreal feel? Cause oh, you said well, there's not going to be a ton of magic. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's going to be, um, if it's going to be like hyper realistic, like to make it look as realistic as possible, or is it uh, still going to be something otherworldly there? uh it's, it's going to be realistic but uh i want to use more like dark skin like not like not light, light skin like us kind of not like brown skin like us but like dark dark skin tones more mm -hmm. often because like in ethiopia like we don't see them much often you know like we don't see people from the south west side of the people like uh, it would be cool, like uh, for example, like if we uh, like Ben Shangul and Gambela. Yes, yes, like and uh, I feel like more a lot of people will relate to as an Africans, other Africans like Sudanese or similar skin tone people will also relate. Of course, we're going to include uh, skin tones like us, but like we should there there's this subconscious colorism that's happening in our country we, we we just subconsciously believe like darker is bad you know like even like we're black but like i, I think so like like you know we just accept it like so 
I yeah, I've funny. tried to avoid it uh, because Bari is even the name of an ethnic group. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's one of the ethnic groups that's wiped out. It's related to the Beni Shangul and the Gambela and the Kunaman Nara of Ertra. The the proper word for for slave is either Loli, uh, which is neutral, Ashkar is male, and then Gered is is female. But uh, we throw in the word Barea too because, like you said, of the colorism where it was it was the name of one of the ethnicities. I don't think it it quite exists anymore. They must have uh, blended in or, or blended out, as it were. Um, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right in in that regard. I remember just from the '70s, my grandfather had warned my uncle that he better be able to count his seven generations if he's going to a certain rural area. And the reason that he warned him that way in the '70s is that he said, you know, someone might capture you and you know make you you know against your will into a slave or something to that effect and it's crazy to think about that when we talk about the the various kings who outlawed slavery kind of according to the law whereas uh de facto you know the facts on the ground and the situation sometimes uh may be a little bit blurrier yes yeah it's yeah so so that it's, it's good what what is it that in, inspired you to, um, to, to try and um, do some good, let's say, with your work as opposed to that? Like one of the questions in the philosophy of art that we used to study a lot was when we're talking about beauty, is it just about the looks of it? Is it about the general story and the narrative or is there any morality? So like, do you see the art that you produce having uh, any, any specific morals or, or guiding principles that you want to express? You said you like the Bible. Is it, do, do you think that people will read your comic and, and see kind of subtle or, or obvious biblical principles T to me, the obvious kind of, um, Examples of this are always uh, J.R.R. Tolkien mm -hmm. um, with his Lord of the Rings series where he's kind of subtly, very subtly spreading biblical principles. Whereas in his Friends series, in the Narnia series, it's a little more obvious, like the lion is Jesus. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah. That's a Lewis, C.S. Lewis. So do, do you think you would, you would, would you, I guess the first question is, would you be trying to impart in your audience any sort of morals or, uh, yeah, we could begin with that. And then, and then you could tell me whether it would be more subtle or more in your face. Well, I, I will, I will for sure not put immoral things. That's, that's how I'm going. I'm not going to, uh, encourage sexual immorality and um, destructive behaviors, you know what I mean? Or yeah, such things. But, but that doesn't mean I am going to impose my thoughts. Like for example, if you uh, watch current cartoons or animes on Netflix, uh, you realize that they're imposing you to, they're, they're very good animations and they're very, very good uh, uh, productions, but like they're trying to impose uh, the LGBTQ. Uh, I mean, I don't have any problem with that, but like, I mean, we should not like have, we should not impose things like on kids, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. there are common grounds that we all agree. For example, like respect your, your neighbor, kind of like the golden rules that like everyone agrees on, but we don't mention that it's from the Bible, that it's the base, you know? Like there are a lot of, common laws uh, that we use but we don't say it's from the bible you know like that's i'm just going to use normal human decency but i'm not going to uh impose any uh denominations like for example um there are a lot of denominations in uh, our country of course like the orthodox the catholic the protestants and all but of course there's going to be a realistic representation as possible like you know but i'm not going to uh and of course it's going to be inclusive the muslims and uh, the 
of course, uh, all kinds of community. It's going to be realistic, so you're not going to hide, but we're not going to uh, put all the truths out because the truth is sometimes painful if you don't hold it uh, with a glove or, you know, like an oven and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no, I, two of the people that I've mentioned uh, a lot on Twitter recently, and I don't know why. When growing up, I I never made the connection. But as an adult, it's so clear to me, especially after both have passed away. But in the American context, Fred Rogers or Mr. Rogers, and in the Ethiopian context, Abab Batesfaye, they both had what you can call children's ministry. They were both speaking on television, reaching millions of children. And uh, to your point, uh, less C.S. Lewis and more J.R.R. Tolkien there's a subtle, basic morality, uh, or ethics that they seem to be teaching. But like you said, they're not, you never felt imposing. I don't know if you, did you grow up watching Abba Batesfaya at all? If not, Mr. Yeah, Rogers? I met him once in a taxi, like traveling in the world. Like, yeah. <laughs> no way. How how yeah. was that? Was that like long after you had seen him on TV? I was, I think I was like uh, maybe eight or nine years old. Uh, wow. Yeah, it was epic. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Did, were, did were you starstruck? <laughs> Is that your first celebrity? I don't know. Like, he he didn't like reflect this. I'm a god kind of uh, most celebrities, uh, you know, taught mentality. Like, he's a normal human being, like all of us. Like, trying to support his family and you know, like, live life. Yeah, and fight his enemies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he have enemies? Maybe I wasn't hip to it, bro. Diaspora uh, I just would, uh, whenever I'd visit Ethiopia, is when I'd, I'd uh, tune into him. But <laughs> yeah, did he have enemies? I don't know. It might be political, so I don't want to get into it. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. <laughs> We're not trying to get you in trouble. That's funny. I'm going to have to look into that. I... No, I'm, I'm not afraid. I'm just like, I don't want to speak unverified facts because they cause confusions and, you know, yeah, no, this is, uh, well, this is definitely, um, it, it, this is definitely one of those times and periods of deep fakes, of uh, hard to verify news. <laughs> you don't know what's fake, you don't know what's real, and a lot of distrust of various systems and institutions, and that seeps even into the individual level. So uh, we don't need to contribute to that. But it's safe to say he was one of your influences from back home. Do you do you have any uh, other big influences that other people wouldn't would know about? Um, I mean, you mentioned Stan Lee and Marvel. So that's definitely in the American context. But are there are there any other Ethiopian influences you have? And or could you say anything about uh uh, Stan Lee or, or Marvel or even the DC universe. I may, I don't know if you're a DC hater. Uh, no, I don't care about that. If there's a good story of, I'm a Marvel fan, but you know, like DC is cool too. Right? Okay. <laughs> so uh, the, the thing is, uh, do you know MBC three? Like, do you know Carson network Arabic? No, uh, tell me about it. I don't, like, I'm not hip. Uh, so like in Ethiopia, right? Like we don't have this cable, uh, cable networks or like Xfinity or things like that there. So dish, uh, dish. Yes. The classic, the OG, <laughs> the one and only <laughs> dish. So like, uh, there is this 24 seven airing animations, anime animations. And my first animation, my first animated thing that I saw was Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I I'll, I'll tell you, I read that manga and it's way different than the uh, anime I saw. Is it worth it? Uh, let me ask you, did you watch the American anime or was it from straight from Japan? It was dubbed in Arabic. <laughs> oh my God. Do you know Arabic? <laughs> yes. Oh, so, wow. Huh? Mashallah, Bibi. No, what the color of Oh, that's nice. 
So like now, like I, I watched uh, anime in Arabic, so I speak Arabic, like I communicate in Arabic with Arab communities and stuff. Like that's, that's pretty cool. So yeah, I only picked up a few words. Uh, like I know the word for evening is close to ours, Lailit. They say Laila. I remember the, yeah. the like uh, the drama program. They'd be like Laila, da 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 da. But I, <laughs> I would not pick up that much. Uh, it was incredible to me how many people would watch this stuff and and not know. So good on you. But I don't know if the Arabic version is like the American, but the American was very watered down and he's like super nice. And it's mostly about like card games. The manga I read was super hardcore and almost every episode people would be like jealous of his girl and he would murder them. Like he'd be playing air hockey and he'd attach a bomb to the puck oh. and they would explode on them. He'd be in a, in a library or a bookstore and he'd put books on someone else and he'd kill them. Like it was like oh. the Yu-Gi-Oh in the Japanese manga that I read was way crazier, way more hardcore than the American cartoon. I think, I think it got through some censors or, or, or something, but, uh, but, but sorry, I cut you off. Yeah. You, you were, grew up on Yu-Gi-Oh! So Yu-Gi-Oh! was an influence, an early influence. Yeah, the first, so like, uh, then I watched like other, like spectacular Spider-Man, like the series and, uh, and a lot of cartoons that you might not know, like, cause I don't know if you like a cartoon from the two thousands and like, yeah. So, uh, I grew up watching cartoons. I still watch cartoons. Like now, they're more just adultish, you know. Like they're more grown up, and I still watch Gumball too sometimes, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I love like it made me laugh. This it made me love this two uh, D uh, art form, like this uh, art that style. And yeah, uh, <laughs> when I was like in. Uh, when I was like in um, grade five, like a fifth grade, I was 11. I don't know if uh, different countries have a different grade. That's similar. Uh, that's similar. No, that's similar. Uh, uh, yeah, like I used to make my own comics. <laughs> I, I, there was this guy called um, Nero, like inspired by, uh, you know, uh, Danny Phantom. <laughs> uh, the name is familiar. Uh, remind me. I, I, I don't, maybe I'll have to pull it up to see. Danny fan you for you'll see the image and you'll see the oh yeah yeah I've seen this this was a little bit past my time I've seen I've seen some of that I think my sister might have seen more of that uh I've seen I've seen this character before yeah but you're I definitely to, did not watch it religiously you're up to date for your generation like I respect that <laughs> like you like I was I want to say this for like I saw your uh while you post on online like your YouTube your Twitter and your Instagram like you know, uh, the, deep in the past, the traditions and everything you respect them, and you join the current uh, technology and trends, and this this is like I love I love this balance, and I respect that. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, you know we try not to be leb leb. We try not to be uh, in the lukewarm center. We try to know the most ancient things and the most futuristic, and combine them. Um, I had an article one time on my Substack uh, after a guest had mentioned this idea. Uh, I had always phrased it in terms of being a primitivist and a technologist. And like you said, someone interested in the future and the past. And the guest had thrown this phrase at me, archaeofuturism. And it, it really, it stuck with me. So I added, you know, the prefix, which r relates to all the languages of Ethiopia and that is a uh, Afro-Asiatic, and I thought it describes us um, so perfectly. I think it gets to the complexion question too, and it's something I didn't understand until I I read some biology papers recently, and 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 really been trying to focus more on on STEM in general, but trying to pick up what I what I have been neglecting over the past ten years—a little bit of light physics reading and listening, and, and same thing with biology, and. Basically, the majority of people in Ethiopia, besides that southwest corner that you mentioned, have some sort of mix of West Asian populations. And the 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 degree to which that is is still not clear, but you know, it might be between thirty and forty percent from West Asia, whether it's uh, you know, Anatolia, like modern day 
Armenia, Turkey, Georgia, or, you know, one of the Greek islands like Crete or Cyprus. And, and the rest is obviously and clearly and undoubtedly East African. And uh, so Afro-Asiatic archaeofuturism, those are the, those are like the things like religion, politics seems to be like a lot of interest that you have too. Uh, anime, um, martial arts, all of these things, but it, it all stems from a deep belief that no one group or no individual has a total access to knowledge and to truth. And so if you look towards the past, what, you know, the probabilist, the Orthodox Christian, Nassim Taleb, the very famous, uh, <laughs> uh, don't get him mad on Twitter. Uh, he has spread the whole Lindy movement, right? Which is appreciating that if something has lasted a really long time, it's probably going to last another long time, but that's a probability. It's not a guarantee. And so it's this understanding that something is not good just because it's old, but if it's lasted a really long time, that might be a pretty good indicator that it's good. And then not getting stuck there and saying like new things are good, but just because it's new doesn't mean it's good. You know, you should examine it all. I, I go back to um, my father did one year at Haile Selassie University when it was Haile Selassie University. Whoa. And they used to have this quote from Paul in Guz. It was on the motto, and I, I seen some young cats uh, remix it and start selling it in crew necks. I never got a crew neck. If somebody's watching this, please go get me that crew neck. I would rock it in it in a heartbeat. But what it says in Guz is "Kudlo amakro was a sanaya asnu, hulunum marmuru melkam yahonun yazu." Examine everything and hold on to the good. And that's like obviously Paul is talking about it in a very specific context in like a moral setting, but I, I apply it to even like mundane things. So I appreciate you, you noticing that some people don't get that. Some people will see me and think I'm only obsessed with the past and, you know, vice versa. Some people, uh, in, in another respect, some people think I'm only obsessed with the future if they only know in one context, but it means that you must have seen a breadth of things to recognize that I'm neither past nor future biased. Of course, like, I mean, I, I thought it was something obvious, like, because you always uh, express it in every way you can find. To. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I like a <laughs> few things uh, get me uh, more heated or salty than when someone misunderstands in that way. Like if they because there's there's a sense in which some people, let's say they're not even future focused, they're present focused. If you talk about anything from the past, like they just get nervous. Like they're just like, oh, you know, yeah, like yeah. so so someone wants to bring the old order and they want everybody to be oppressed and and all of these things. But um it's it's to me it's a, a lack of curiosity, a lack of wonder. And and I, I I see this this wonder and curiosity in you. I think anyone to be a creative needs to have that curiosity and wonder. But for me, you know, you know, again, this is a political thing, so I won't um, impose it on you. But just from my point of view, mm -hmm. um, I look at the Ethiopian revolution um, and I see similarities with the Russian revolution. I see similarities with the French revolution. And we could talk about the American revolution, too. But especially the older I get and the more I assess all of these things, mm -hmm. I, I think that there are always some valid concerns in the minds of these revolutionaries but it seems like in each of those cases but i'll speak to the one that's closest to home the ethiopian revolution it seems like a lot was lost and i would say more was lost than what was gained uh that's not to say that you know nothing good came of it um sometimes you have to go through that to be able to move forward as a society but to me i just i think about what if what if different things had happened? Um, what, <laughs> how many more creatives could we have in Ethiopia today? What, what type of works would they be making? You know, what would, what would be inspiring them? What would be, what would they be aiming at? And, and that, you know, that keeps me up at night. Hmm. It's like a, a burning desire to like a light <laughs> inside you. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. Uh, I'm not a very 
talkative person. Like I love talking, but I, I'm more of a listener. So like I should I should interview you more. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know I was gonna say you got me. Aslaf Allah came back. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're good at that. You know I've had a few guests who are good at that. Uh, I have a Mexican friend Armando. He's been on the program like three times, and each time. Up, Armando, me. yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and we win as noches wherever you are. He uh, he gets me with that every time. Uh, so who knows? Maybe as you expand the comic, there will be a podcast around it too, and you'll <laughs> you'll bring different people. That could be a promotional item, you know, um, course, yeah. as well. So uh, we won't extend it too far. I think this has been a, a beautiful session just to get a gursha of your mindset and get people excited about products of what you're getting into before we head out are there any kind of final thoughts about art in general or your art in specific or advice you'd like to give to people wanting to try the the number one thing i hear which i think is discouraging is for example and, and i have students in amharic as well and I, I teach privately they say this to me i'm in my 30s i think it's too late for me to learn 30s yeah so i i okay i'm glad you, you seem to be on the same page as me yeah i they could only hear my voice so many times so i wanted to come from you uh um what could you tell somebody about <laughs> or how could you advise them to say that it's never too late and um when when you're done doing that go ahead and and plug where people can find your artwork or or follow you on on social media as well. Well, like there's this interesting short story about, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you heard about this doctor who uh, got his degree. Uh, he started his degree at like 70, like seven zero mm -hmm. years old. And like he got it, like he then uh, lived till, I don't know, more than 80. And like he practiced medicine and everything like that. like. So, uh, and the, yeah, and uh, the woman who started running at that age, I mean, around 60 to 70, 70, the same age, but like she started running, like she realized she was gifted. Then she just did it. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like, uh, uh, I'm not like a top tier uh, kind of artist. I'm just a beginner. Like, <laughs> so like, uh, I want to shout out to uh, Musay at Buddha, like follow his artwork <laughs> at this, uh, yeah advertising so what my advice is just just do it like nike you know what i mean like just just do it like start uh read books that will help you use youtube it's the age of technology there's a lot of resources free resources to learn to do things and so like just do it you're so young so you're so young bro like come on <laughs> like what <laughs> you're a kid <laughs> even like 60 is a kid like six zero is a kid come on like you have a lot of time uh, just focus on important things like uh, God and faith. And I see I'm posing my religion right now. <laughs> so yeah, it's okay. This is a very religion friendly <laughs> channel. You got a mat? Okay. Welcome. Welcome. So follow me at uh, Yas Lion or Just Lion uh, underscore uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's it. I don't use Facebook. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, we see each other again. And I really appreciate your, your channel. Very uh, enlightening. And please, Berta, thank you. Thank you all for tuning in and this something. So yeah, this is uh, what I got to say. <laughs> thank you so much.